Guys, so this video is going to be about the importance of surge protection devices. So a few nights ago, we had a thunderstorm here. It had way more lightning activity than we're used to. Around 12.45 or so at night, we heard a massive boom out by my largest solar array. Right before that though, a couple seconds before that, or maybe one second before that, everything started buzzing in the house. So the ceiling fan was buzzing. My alarm clock next to the bed was buzzing like I had a radio in it. I don't have a radio in that alarm clock. So yeah, everything was buzzing a lot first and then there was that loud crash. At that point, the power went out. So everything's being powered by the 18K PV here. So it was a massive surge. The next morning I saw the lightning map showed there was one right near our house. And it was somewhere very close to our largest array. I was very happy to see first thing in the morning that there was no damage to the actual array. But looking on the monitoring app, I could see that there was zero wattage on PV1, which is my largest array there, the one built as a roof. So I'll just go into briefly how I diagnosed the issue and then remedied it temporarily. So the array is here and I believe it was one of these trees over here that got struck. I haven't gone in there to check because I mean it really doesn't matter either way. Something got hit. So it might have been a bit further away down the hill. Yeah, but either way, I'll show you what I've got inside. So first I want to show you guys the EMP shield here. The light is off of it and that actually went out uh, probably two, three months ago. And they said I can just send it back and they'll swap it out but I never did because it was actually functioning anyway. So when you see that off, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the issue. So when you open up the combiner box here, when you open up the box here, I can see there's no indicator lights on the array. This one on the left here, which would be, I guess, PV1, that actually went out a while back. Maybe I've got a bad luck with LED little indicator lights, but, uh, but yeah, this one should be on and there is no light. So, I can check the fuses. So I checked all these fuses for continuity and they're good. And the reason I went to that first is I actually had one of those blow earlier in the season. There's been a lot of lightning this summer. So I have two different strings of 10 running into this combiner box right here. And this is A and that's B. So I'm not even using B. And I've got both A here and this is the output to the inverter. And from the output, that's where I put the EMP shield. So before it goes to the inverter, it passes through the EMP shield here. And I think that's what the issue is because it should, this should be on. And I have voltage to the array itself. I checked that first. But once you get through this breaker, I've got nothing. So let's see here. Yeah, so the indicator <laughs> light came on. So that's what's happening. The EMP shield protected my system from lightning and right now it's just permanently shunting to ground now so this is toast and it's not letting any of my PV pass to the inverter even though the inverter still did take a punch which like I said I think it's through the AC side so EMP shield will swap these out here in the event that you have a lightning strike and something like this happens they'll swap these out I think it's 50 bucks Man, I am so thankful this thing took the brunt of the electricity from the lightning strike. And after I pop this out, in the meantime, while I'm waiting on this for return shipping, I think it's probably gonna take around a week or so. Uh, and we've got a couple more storms on the way. I'm going to be installing this. So I actually got one of these to be able to show you guys a different option on the new array I'm gonna be putting in. And this is a midnight solar surge protector. If you look at these online, they're very similar stats for a lot of the stuff, although they don't make any claims about protecting against an EMP. And I actually mentioned these when I installed the EMP shields. So these are quite a bit cheaper. So a lot of people go with this option and Midnight has a great reputation. There is a lot of literature on the EMP shields though, so you guys can read up on both of them and determine whether or not they work for you. I do like the fact that EMP shield has dual units so you can hook two arrays into one of these little boxes so it'll just have two indicator lights i can show you the one that i have inside the shop and the one i'm going to be putting on my main panel is actually going to be outside of the grid panel so i'm going to put it right on the wall next to the panel but you can buy a more a slimmer model of this and it'll fit inside the box itself all right so i'm going to hook the panels back up and then when we turn this breaker on, it should light up blue here on the surge protector. So they're both hooked up. Let's see if this works. 
Oh yeah, fancy. Check that out. So it is a little tilted to the side, but again, this isn't where it belongs. Maybe not the best angle with these PV wires in the way, but you guys can see it. it has a cool blue glow. Okay, so we're getting 2,500 watts here. I guess I could have checked on the monitoring app just as easy while I was out there, but yeah, so we're getting, it's the top array here. So we're getting 25-ish hundred watts. All right then, problem solved for now. I'm gonna slap a return label on a box for that EMP shield, get that thing sent out. And then I'm gonna go back to the project I was working on. This was sort of a, well, not sort of, it was definitely a sidetrack. I forgot to add a couple things, but through the magic of editing, I'm going to splice this in here. Plus I'm wearing the same shirt and hat, so I don't think anyone will notice. The first would be that after the lightning strike, it took around a minute or a little less for the 18K PV to come back on. So I'm thinking the 18K PV got hit on the AC side of things and not the DC side, so probably not from the solar, considering the EMP shield shunted all that power to the ground. But this thing did take a hit and got right back up. So that is the second thing I wanted to mention. They just released some news a little while back that the 18K PV, the 12K PV, and some of the EG4 batteries have passed EMP hardened testing. And a lot of people, when they're thinking about EMPs, aren't thinking about lightning strikes or solar flares. But those fit in that category also. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. If people were going to buy an 18K PV or 12K PV or one of the wall mount batteries, it just makes it easier for them to make that decision probably. So I figured I'd show you guys, there is zero external damage to the EMP shield. So it's not singed or charred in any way. And I hope I explained it well enough out there, but the EMP shield's job is to send the power to the ground. And once it takes a hit like it did out there, that's it. So the EMP shield is finished at that point. All the power is going to the ground. You could almost look at it like a relay, and once you get a pulse like that or a surge like that, the relay clicks and all the power is being sent directly to the ground. After that, it can't be closed again. So I would highly recommend investing in quality surge protectors. I have actually recommended that in a couple of my other videos, but this is a definitely a wake-up call for me. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be installing a surge protector on the house, and you guys can see how I do that. And like I mentioned before, there are a number of surge protectors, but the EMP shield and the midnight solar units both stand out. Those are the ones that you see most often. It sort of seems like a bit of an expensive investment at first when you're looking at it, but it's much cheaper than investing in an entire system again. I wouldn't consider our area extremely lightning prone or anything, but I think it can happen anywhere. So I'll leave a link to the EMP shield and the midnight solar units. Read up on both of them. See which one works for you. You can also watch the EMP shield install I did on the last one. It's not a difficult install. If you're putting it on PV, it's red to red, black to black, and you're giving it a pathway to the ground. We're just extremely thankful it wasn't worse. As close as it was there, it could have been a lot worse. I couldn't sleep the rest of that night, partly because of the adrenaline and partly because I thought I'd look out and see the array was burning at some point. So yeah, I think we were extremely blessed on that one. So guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned.